Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Liz Real Talk. Okay, we're live. It's my third live of the week. I, I'm doing three lives now every week, and I think I'm getting used to my schedule. Let me turn the light. Um, okay, so tonight um, I want to do a follow-up on Foxconn and the impact on Apple's supply chain in, in China. The subject, it's a, it's a big topic, and uh, I don't think I can... You know, I think it requires several sessions and also it requires us to kind of keep track of what's happening. Um, oh, the number of the number of people live got dropped. What happened? Hmm. But anyways. Is everyone can everyone hear me? This is weird. The n number of people uh, joining have been declining oh commercial okay wow hmm? all right it's back again sorry um sorry for the distraction so i'll first give you an update on uh the situation in Fox in Foxconn um, in Zhengzhou, and then we'll talk about the impact on uh, on the company's long term prospect and Apple's supply chain. Um, let me share this. Okay, so the the names. Remember, I, I mentioned last time the there was a room seven twenty six. Uh, there was a rumor that eight people died uh, in in that room. The name list has come out uh, on on Twitter, and. They're all women, but uh, the company has d denied and called that that's not real. And there are also uh, CCP affiliated Chinese media who also question the val validity of, of the name list. I have no way to verify this. We probably won't ever be able to verify it. Um, but it, to me, it seems like those who deny it do not come up with any details to to substantiate their claims. You know, they did not tell us uh, who were in the rooms, what happened to these people now. Um, there's no details. All they did was denying it. And yet here we have a list of eight, eight women. Uh, so that's just, just that. And... Um, now, the, the other question is how many people have left, right? We've seen those social uh, viral videos last time. So the question is how many people have left? The number that I have seen is about 100,000 people have left. Um, so if the facility has about 250,000 people and 100,000 people have left, uh, it's said that about 120,000 people are able to work. It doesn't mean that everyone who has uh, has left is able to work because they may be in quarantine. So they say about 120,000 people um, are able to work. Now, what I want to show you is this is a poster by Foxconn to encourage people to stay and not to leave. And basically, it says if you work full time in November, you get a total bonus that's uh, 15,000 yuan and more. And it provides the calculation. So it, um, th that is a lot of money. 15,000 yuan is like, um, it's 2,000 US dollars. Yeah. So you make uh, 2,000 US dollars in a month. And that's uh, quite a substantial income for, for Chinese. So what, what people say, people who are familiar with Foxconn uh, operation said that every production line has two, 10 processes or 10 stations, and each station has two shifts. And these people are, uh, have to be trained. And when you don't have enough people for each shift, then you have to consolidate uh, the people. You have to close production lines and consolidate people. So obviously they are uh, trying to keep people as much as they can. Um, in terms of the the type of iPhones uh, this facility makes, uh, it makes mostly the I uh, iPhone 14 Pro. Uh, the high-end Pro sells better. 
uh, than than the the low end uh, iPhone 14. Some analysts say that about 60 to 65 percent of the iPhone 14 series are iPhone Pros, and that's what this uh, facility makes. So, and I heard that iPhone Pro Max has a waiting time of one month. So it may be related to this. Now, I want to talk about Foxconn's uh, hiring practice. Most of the people who have left are seasonal or temp workers. So Foxconn, in order to save cost, Foxconn hire these people uh, seasonally, depending on iPhone's product release cycle or, or production cycle. And what they do is they pay these people uh, a bonus, a big bonus at the end of three months. You know, if they complete the three months and if they meet certain attend attendance uh, requirement, then they get, uh, I think, somewhere around 10,000 yuan bonus at the end, at the end of the three months. That's about $1,500. So, and then with the, the pandemic, um, with what happened in the last three weeks, a lot of people don't think they're going to get the, the bonus, the rear end bonus. So that's why they left, because there's no point. Uh, there's no point for them to stay. So that's why a lot of the people who have left are the temp workers. And they say the ones who have, who, who have left behind are still are just trying to get the, the 10,000 yuan, the bonus. Um, in terms of the government's reaction, on the evening of October 29th, the day that um, the, the, the death of the eight people in room 726 broke, uh, various cities in Henan have issued open letters to personnel leaving Foxconn, uh, basically saying that we have prepared to, to receive you back home uh, to ensure point-to-point -point reception, to make sure the, the follow-up quarantine or whatever mechanisms, safety mechanisms they have for the, for the, um, for the quarantine is going to be implemented. So various cities have already issued open letters that evening. And then on the 31st, the Public Health Commission of the Zhengzhou Municipal Government uh, published an article on WeChat quoting experts to tell people not to panic and, uh, and then say that COVID-19 is not dreadful. It's preventable and it's treatable. So this is completely different from, you know, what the, um, the state control media or what the officials have, have been saying up to this point, right? In order to reinforce zero COVID, they've been saying, you need to take precaution. It is scary. It is, you know, dreadful. But now they're saying it is not. And then on the 1st of November, the city of Zhengzhou even announced um, the, 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 the city is unlocked. So, um, so everything looked great from the 29th to the 1st. And then uh, on the 2nd, all of a sudden, the Foxconn facility uh, announced that it's going to close down again for seven days. So no one could leave anymore. Anyone who... Um, had left before that point, had left. So now people try to leave, they cannot leave. So people are saying, why there's su such a drastic change, you know, like within a day? Um, why there suddenly they just changed 180 degrees? And so interestingly, there's an analysis. There, um, there's a different opinions from the local government and the central government. Obviously, the local government, like I said last time on Tuesday, is interested in uh, co cooperating with Foxconn to keep the production going, to keep the business running so that, you know, the tax revenue can come in because it is the largest um, employer in the, in the area. It also contributes 80 percent of the, um, the uh, total export of the city. So it's a major employer that they cannot afford to lose. They cannot afford to shut down this facility. So the local government is trying to um, soften the zero COVID policy and trying to co collaborate. But the central government um, seems to want to go back to, you know, zero COVID. But there's an, another reason. There's an, another reason. Um, 
Here I want to show you just some numbers. It's in Chinese, but I roughly translated. Um, Foxconn, just in terms of, we have to understand the scale of Foxconn, Foxconn and its contribution, not just to the province of Henan, but to the entire China before we can continue our discussion. So this is a, a Yahoo Chinese report. And basically it said, um, I'm just showing the section where it give you the specific number, I'll get to that. But basically this is based on a report on China's top 500 import export companies in 2020. And the report was published by China Foreign Economic and Trade Association. And this report, unfortunately, uh, has been discontinued since 2021. So we no longer see any recent data, but based on the 2020 report, and uh, we know that of all the, of all the uh, companies, whether private or state, okay, all companies included, the Foxconn Zhengzhou Company subsidiary ranks number one in terms of export. And its annual export in 2019 was 30, almost 32 billion US dollars. And if you look at the top five uh, major exporters of Chinese company, all included, state or private, Foxconn has three of them. Okay, number one is this Zhengzhou factory. And if you add up, and this quote, I say, if you add up the top nine uh, Foxconn subsidiaries in China within the top 100 exporters, they total 82, uh, almost $83 billion um, in total export value. And that's about, uh, what, that's, what's the percentage of that over 480? 480, yeah, and then, then total, total, um, sorry, um, okay, yeah, and, and that's about 30%, that's about 30% of the total export value of the top 100 companies. So nine um, Foxconn companies, you know, export a third of the total value of 100 top Chinese exporters. That just shows you how much that is. And, and then how many, sorry, how many, uh, how many subsidiaries does Foxconn have in China? I have, it has 36 plants. So if you add everyone, right, you could easily, uh, I think Foxconn easily reach 100 billion US dollars in terms of total export. And here we have uh, Foxconn's founder, uh, Terry Gao, who made this comment in 2018. And uh, he said that basically Foxconn accounts for 3.9% of China's total GDP, um, and then 3.6%, uh, 3.9% for export and 3.6% for import of China's entire GDP. And his goal is to grow that to 5%. Okay, this may be a great accomplishment for him in 2018, but I think now it could become his liability because he's making way too much money in China. Um, so I don't know if you follow the news at the end of last year where Foxconn announced that it was interested in invest 800 million U.S. dollars in the bankrupt Tsinghua Unigroup, the, 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 the state-sponsored um, semiconductor company that went bankrupt. At the time, it shocked many people because people say, well, how come Foxconn want to get into semiconductor? It doesn't look like it's the line of business it's in. And it caught my attention at the time, and I was kind of looking into that. And many of the experts were saying that it's because Foxconn 
uh, had a hard time moving its money out of China, or the Chinese government does not want Foxconn to bring its money, uh, to let its money leave China. It hopes Foxconn can reinvest in China. So, um, but then the deal was subject to the approval by the um, Taiwanese regulatory authorities, and it w- wasn't approved. So this August, um, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen. So if you, if you look at from, if you, look, if you think from the CCP's perspective, its economy is having so much problems and um, you have this major conglomerate you know, a Taiwanese conglomerate that's um, making so much money in China. And if you're CCP or if CCP leaders, you know, they're trying to do everything they can to think how they can monetize, right, over that. So um, now now let's bring in another company, okay? This woman, um, her name is Wang Lai Chun. She was an assembly line worker at Foxconn many years ago, I think from 1989 to 1999. She uh, she graduated from middle school. She did not even go to high school, and she worked at Foxconn for 10 years. And she rose, uh, she, she apparently was very, very intelligent and very smart and did a great job and rose through the ranks. And then in 1999, after 10 years, she started a company with her brother, and then her company uh, was kind of a contractor of uh, Fox uh, Foxconn. They do these odd jobs that Foxconn is not, was not interested in. But her company, look look at her net net wealth now, right? Seven point two billion U.S. dollars. Um, her company, which is called uh, Luxshare Precision. And this company, let me see. This company uh, had been doing OEM work for Apple. And um, in the early days, it was primarily making uh, parts uh, and also smaller accessories like AirPods. However, it bought out a a Taiwanese um, a Taiwanese OEM called Wistron in 2020. And then it started become very ambitious in, um, in doing OEM for Apple in making iPhones. And in 2021, it got an a, a order of, to make 10 million iPhones for Apple. And then according to state media coming from China, Last December, it invested seven, one point seven billion U.S. dollars to build a new factory in Jiangsu, and um, people basically took that as a signal to uh, overtake, uh, overtake P- Petatron. You know, so basically, these are the three uh, major OEMs suppliers in China that make Apple or iPhones. I shouldn't say Apple iPhones. And so, according to the state Chinese media, Luxshare is interested in becoming number two to beat out uh, <clears throat> Pegatron. So, and now let's talk about Apple. Okay, Apple has started to support the development of other OEMs in order to break Foxtron's monopoly. So it has been supporting. Uh, companies like uh, Luxshare, uh, its Chinese name is Li Xun Precision. And so for the past 10 years, um, under Tim Cook's leadership, he was successful in building Apple into the world's largest high-tech company uh, with market share of over $2 trillion. And the, one of the biggest reasons is he has tr- used, he has treated China as it's a major uh production base and and where its supply chain is that's his big success then but then it could be his biggest risk now 
Remember um, back in August, around the time when Nancy Pelosi was going to Taiwan, Apple asked its Taiwanese suppliers to label uh, their products as all made in China. I don't know if, if you, um, it, was, it caused quite a contra controversy at the time. Um, so it's becoming more and more difficult for Apple to, um, to, 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 st uh, to stand firm to face the CCP, right? Because half of its suppliers are in China. Now let's take a look at, so they're called, these are called the five Taiwanese electronic brothers, siblings in China. And they make, so for example, we talked about Wiscon is already bought out by the Chinese company uh, Luxshare. So it's it, it no longer, it's no longer Taiwanese. We talked about Foxconn, Petatron. And then uh, Compel is the second largest notebook manufacturer in the world, in the world after Quanta Computers. Um, and it also makes, in addition to uh, notebooks, it also makes Apple Watches. And then Quanta Computers makes MacBooks, ThinkPads. Um, they also make uh, notebooks for other manufacturers, other brands like Dell, HP, um, yeah. So, so these, I think these companies are now facing the same challenge as uh, Foxtron because guess who was in Henan on October 28th? Uh, Mr. Xi Jinping was in Henan on that day. Uh, so people, some China experts believe that uh, the guy that I circled is the party secretary of Henan, Luo Yangsheng, who is a close Xi Jinping ally. And people say he for sure had told Xi Jinping what was happening in Foxtron because he, he, you know, with what's happening in his territory when the big boss is in his province um, and every, he, he must have told him, right? So we don't know. So people think Xi Jinping must know at the time what was happening uh, in Henan. And so uh, do you also pay, know that in the last day or so, there's a big news coming out. Tencent is create, uh, creating a joint venture with China Unicom. China Unicom is state owned. Tencent is private. Um, many Westerners dismissed it as just kind of a business collaboration. But for Chinese, this is a major turning point. It is, China is going back to the time where it's called Gongsi Heying. It's called private public partnership. Um, this is what the CCP did in the 1950s to, to kick off the campaign, to gradually, um, take over private enterprises as state owned. The first thing they did was to create private public partnership. Um, and then so what they did is they let the public owned company run these private businesses. They allocate certain shares to the private business owner and they could get um, dividends or they get in, in, in the 1950s, they get, they, they get like 5% a return on, on, on investment, whatever, however they calculate the value of the investment. So they just told them you get 5% every year. Um, and then we will do this for 20 years. But then after 10 years, not even 20 years, the CCP de declared that, okay, we've paid you everything. The company is, is state owned now. So these people lost their company in 10 years, not 20 years. And so, when, so when this news came out, I saw all the um, China experts, you know, Chinese-based China experts are all saying, this is the beginning of the process that the CCP is doing to gradually turn private companies into state-owned. And they're starting with the Chinese private companies as the first step, you know, so Tencent is, is, um, is one of the early ones. And with everything that's happening in China, that and also you've heard about um, the, the setup of the public canteens, 
uh, the CCP is hiring people in various localities to to set up these public canteens and public retail stores called Gong Xiao She, where they're just a collaborative. They're um, they eliminate the distributors in the middle. They're just basically like retail stores, not grocery, not grocery store. They sell mostly uh, food products or daily necessities, uh, but they're not like supermarkets where you can go and just pick whatever you want to buy, but they are housed with sales people. So you have to ask people, it's like going back to the 50s where you have to ask people to get the product for you from the shelves. Uh, the reason is they control the quantity you buy because when you go to grocery, when you go to supermarkets, you, you pick however, you buy however many you want, right? You could empty the whole, the entire shelf. But with that kind of state-owned uh, retail outlets, it's called collaborative they control how many how many units you can buy and it's entirely state owned <clears throat> excuse me so and it, it from the government's perspective they eliminate the middleman they tell the public they could save everyone money because they eliminated the middleman but the real essence of that the government gets to make the money right if you if you look at the during the lockdowns the government was the government is responsible for delivering food and produce to the families guess who made all the money the government so the government wants to you know be it wants to make the money um you know and get rid of all the private businesses so whether it's restaurant whether it's supermarket um wouldn't it be the ccp just thought wouldn't it be nice if we make all the money rather than having these private business make them. So that's why um, China is actively hiring people. I think I, I, the last I've seen is four, they're hiring 450,000 people across various regions to set up these public canteens and, and public um, retail outlets. And also they are uh, turning their largest private owned companies like Tencent into um, a, a collaborative um, entity with the government. So with all of that happening, and then he's talking about common um, common prosperities, I think if you think, how could the CCP allow a Taiwanese company um, that contributes to 5% of China's GDP, you know, making all the money based on the business for American brand in China, on their land, it's not going to let that happen. So I think people are saying that this entire incident, I don't want to get into other theories saying that, oh, this maybe this is a setup. You know, they, they made this entire drama happen um, so that they have an excuse to kind of, you know, crack down on Foxconn and then promote their Chinese company, uh, Luxshare. I don't want to say that because I don't have any proofs to to substantiate that. But I think the CCP or the Beijing authorities definitely have the incentive trying to take over Foxconn's um, gigantic business and try to figure out how they can make the money instead of a Taiwanese company. So with that said, I just want to share with you the... the um, the stocks that we've seen. So here you see the stock performance for the past five days since this whole drama happened. Interestingly, Apple dropped more than Foxconn. Apple dropped 6%. Um, Foxconn dropped only 1%. And then guess whose stock price increased? Here we go. Uh, Luxshare, who is listed in uh, in the uh, Shenzhen Stock Exchange, its price went up 11% in the past five days. So with that said, I think um, I don't want to make any premature conclusions, but I think we could we should clearly be concerned with uh, the future of Foxconn and Apple in China. I think in the short run, Beijing will keep Apple in China just to create jobs because it needs these jobs in China. Um, and, but for the long run, I think you know, th they're saying that Chinese 
are saying that Apple and Tesla to, C to the CCP is like Huawei to the United States government. So the, C C the CCP will sooner or later use Apple and Tesla as a bargaining chip with the US or sanction them on grounds of national security. So over the long run, I think Apple is in, in you know, is, um, is not in a good situation. And given the amount of, um, given the, the size of their Chinese operation and how much they depend on China, they won't move out of China overnight. So, um, so the question is, do they have enough time? So they're competing with time, right? So how soon does the CCP want to uh, start to rep you know, start to reprimand Apple and Tesla? And then how soon can Apple and Tesla get out of China or if they want to? So you have the you have this this time. Time is of essence here. Um, so that's what I have tonight. Okay. Uh, here, Fox on, Foxconn need to flee if they know what's good for them. Well, yeah, but when you when your business is that gigantic in China, I I don't know. You know, I wonder if people. Sometimes I realize people choose what they want to see. <laughs> you know, when so much is at stake, you want to pretend you don't see anything. It is very difficult to make a decision to say I want to move. I want to. I want to run. Um, people just keep their hope there, right? Okay. Uh, let me see. Thank you, Richard W. Let's see if I have any super questions, super chat questions. Um, from R Rory Lynch. I enjoy the live more and the flowers look lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's okay. Yeah, I just want to say this this is a big discussion. How would that affect Apple's supply chain is a big discussion. But I felt like I've gathered enough information to share with you uh, from my perspective. Um, I think there's a competition between the central government and the local government. The local government does not, oh, I didn't mention this. Yes, this is important. The local government does not want to lose Foxtron, uh, Foxconn, but it, uh, Luxshare is based in Guangzhou, Guangdong. So from the central government's perspective, they don't mind moving uh, the, the, the operation uh, from a Taiwanese company in Henan to a Chinese company in Guangzhou, they would prefer that. To them, it's still both in China, but to the Henan uh, provincial government, they lost, what, 80% of their export. So they don't want that. And that's why you see the uh, the, the 180 degree change um, in, the in, in the local government's attitude, in the local media's um, uh, publicity about about the the outbreak right and that's why because there's a a, a a struggle between the central government and the local government uh, because their you know their outlook is different from sir humphrey lay thanks for the effort with the live stream thank you thank you all right all righty so Um, yeah, 250,000 200, workers became jobless is a huge blow to the local government. It is, yep. Unless they want to relocate to another parts of China. I don't know. India, India, yeah, I, I've seen um, earlier in the year, Tim Cook went to Vietnam and was taking, had, he had a picture with the, the president of, um, or the head of uh, Vietnam. Um, but the question is, how fast can they can they build these mega factories, right? To to start to replace China. That's the question. All right. So if I don't have any other questions, we'll make it short tonight. How's that? Um, good.
good. Alrighty. Well, thank you everyone for joining me. I hope this is helpful. Um, I will, I will talk to you later. S stay well. Bye-bye.